artificial intelligence. Uh, but uh, what I was trying to say here, uh, well, you may hear two different voices. Jason as a baby, uh, Jason as the boy who cried the wolf, and Jason as an old wisdom man. Gandalf like a person. So, so the topic I'm going to share with you is exactly uh, already mentioned by previous presentations. Uh, it, it is there's a wolf out there that all American people need to figure out on what the wolf really are. So, so the title is How Many Boys Are Crying? What? Actually, already many. Uh, and uh, how many wolves are indeed out there that we need to pay attention? So, so, so the real, more serious title is a meta reflection on Americans' external wars from a wider angle lens perspective. Uh, by the word uh, wide angle lens, I mean we jump out of the specifics. <coughs> and we we try to look at this planet <coughs> from an alien's point of view, or if not God's point of view, from an alien's point of view, to see how these earthlings uh, are doing. And, uh, and my main, main frame uh, is that the civilization, the whole human civilization, is actually facing that. So, so the, the wolf is coming. Now, this picture, these two pictures, show us, lead us to conduct this session and the, the reflection. What happened in Vietnam in 1975? And what happened in Afghanistan right now? And they are so similar. And the situation of people flooding out, it is all looks very similar. Only this airplane is kind of old, like the seven. And this airplane is kind of big. But, but the pattern, as Glenda said, the pattern is exactly the same. And why is that? So, so the original question for this Club of Rings session was that why a stupid question, i.e. why does American fail, is being asked the fifth time. Because people ask this question after the Chinese CCP versus KMT civil war. Uh, they ask the uh, Harry Truman's administration uh, why we lose China. And some people say, oh, we never had China for the beginning. But anyway, it, it's a failure. Short phrase put here is, is as misinteracted with KMT versus CCP. Now, second time is the Korea War. And Korea War ended, in my perception, it didn't finish the right job. It, uh, uh, Americans feared USSR here CCP. So, so today we got the two Koreas, the, the North Korea in a nightmare in the, the 1984 type of totalitarianism, and, and then we have uh, South Korea was person and uh, uh, becoming part of the civilization. So, so why did, didn't we just uh, at that time push all the way and liberate the whole Korea? Now, the third time is the Vietnam War. Vietnam War, uh, I think American lost, not because they didn't have enough military capacity. American lost because it, it got attacked from the inside, uh, from a Marxism. I put a question mark. It's a, it's a question subject to discuss. And after the Iraqi War, after Iraqi war, we messed up the status quo and we generated the worst act in terms of the ISIS, Islamic terrorists, who uh, was greatly boosted instead of being conquered. 
And then now Afghanistan drama is still pending right now. And uh, American hostages are still sitting inside that six airplanes uh, without being released out as we talk right now. So, so the reflection is each time there were wars at the beginning, but we brought out a, a number of unintended consequences. But unintended consequences showed up to the end or not end the war. So this thing goes on and on as Glenda pointed out. It, it, it's the complex pattern uh, keep enforcing itself. So, so ultimate question is what Americans did wrong? Uh, and in this fight against the two major hostile ideologies, I identified, and actually not I identified, a lot of scholars identified, i.e. communism and Islamic terrorism or, or Islamic fundamentalism. And do we need a wider angle lens to see the full or fuller picture uh, from a perspective of the civilization evolution? So we have to review some Huntington's theme about the clash of civilization. In, in that work, he, well, he, he gave his first uh, launch book at the American Enterprise Institute. I, I by, by chance, I happened to be in that talk. I even asked a question that he ignored. Uh, but uh, in that work, a clash about the clash of uh, civilization, he made 10 predictions. Let's review. First, he said China US conflict is unavoidable due to a fundamental value conflict. That was in 1990. And he predicted that Islamic West conflict can, will continue after even if it lasted of 1,400 years, it will still going on. And he predicted that the border of Muslim words are bloody always. <laughs> always. Uh, Car, Car would like that. Uh, I don't. I don't like it, but that's the way it no, is. Accurate. I mean, the, so. And he said the Christian countries' alliance will continue. Is, uh, number five, Islam civilization and the Chinese civilization share very little, but they will go together anti-West. That is what I call a uh, Huntington's mindset. And it happened. And he said the European Muslim immigration issues hopefully can be resolved in 2005. Uh, <laughs> He said that in 1993. It's very interesting. Extreme right will rise responding to immigration issues. International trade brings benefit, but also conflict. Countries like Turkey, Russia, Australia, etc., felt lost. They they were confused. They didn't know what to do. And the last one he said is the value of the West is unique, not as general as some of the intellectuals believe. So it's very interesting to review these predictions that uh, Huntington made in 1993. And uh, today, uh, we see a lot of them was accurate. Now, one year, more than one year ago, in, in back in uh, February, 14th, I remember because it's Valentine's Day. Uh, we, the uh, Club of Rini had uh, a round table at George Washington University. And in that round table, I called for a total reflection about what was wrong with these American uh, US government administrations. From FDR to Truman to Johnson to Nixon to Carter, they all made some mistakes. Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, uh, and uh, the two Bush Jr., Obama, and all of them committed huge mistakes that causes the CCP, Communist China, 
become so powerful and are making so huge trouble to the world today. So, so, so that was a call for reflection. Uh, just like a, a law week, we can just mention that we really need to figure things out. Uh, and the Simon Hennigan's nightmare came true to proven by these two pictures. Here is, uh, is Ben Laden uh, being trained with his fellow fighters uh, in China by the communists. These two are communist military guys. And uh, this is, uh, I think, in the 1970s or something pretty earlier, according to what I first said. Now, here is the recent picture that the Taliban visited China and a meeting with the Chinese foreign minister. And uh, shortly after this minute, uh, after this meeting, Taliban took over the whole Afghanistan. So, so that's the situation, that's the war where we we're, were facing up that uh, Samuel Huntington said it would be nightmare if, if, if the Islamic the culture and the Chinese uh, work together to against the West. And this exactly happened. Except I would like to promote a few corrections. Number one, I think the term clash of the civilizations is not correct. Because the in my perception, the real civilization won't collect collapse. Uh, we actually, what's really collapsing uh, is the value system. And uh, they have their value system and uh, we have our own. And uh, those, those value systems are not compatible. So we have to figure out a way uh, out. Secondly, I suggest that we need to abandon the West East kind of a thinking paradigm. Because West East, the, the, the Earth is a wrong thing. You can define anywhere as West or anywhere as East. It's actually, I would suggest we use a different paradigm to reperceive. I call it the mainstream versus peripheral. And by mainstream, I didn't mean purely West. I mean the all the previous uh, previous great civilizations that inherit and then merge with each other with the richest cultural pool. And that I define as mainstream. And the peripheral uh, are those cultures separated, isolated, and uh, uh, consider themselves as the center or they want to take over the world, but they are, their cultural gene pool is poor. So third one, I suggest that we abandon multiculturalism because, well, pluralism is good. And, and the cultural pluralism is acceptable, but uh, What's currently being pushed in our mainstream media, this multiculturalism thing, I think causes a lot of trouble and damage and decline. So, so the globalization, in my perspective, in this framework, is immature. Why it is immature? Because, because your value system are still conflicting, but you start doing business with each other, you can't marry with each other. And you, 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 you have an illusion that if we do more training and do more globalization efforts, uh, supply chains, uh, division of the labor, that sort of thing, and, and everybody will be in peace. The fact is no. The fact is, there are so many conflicts emerging, and so many uh, bloody patterns emerging. So, so I suggest we need to give up 
this concept of multiculturalism, currently pushed by the left liberals, pushed by uh, the progressives. We have to abandon that. Instead, we need to adopt a value system of computation path. In, in other words, we need to find out a way to at least uh, separately doing our own business and uh, let people vote by their feet. So, so if people, some people feel that value system is better for them, they should immigrate into that system. Uh, and if this, this value system we're currently holding is good, we should so, so in that way, we hopefully have the hope to facilitate evolution of our mainstream civilization. So that's the four corrections of some animals. So update, here is an update of my uh, 2015 warning message. I wrote a paper uh, named uh, uh, five major threats to the civilization. I submitted to foreign affairs, and the next year it says I, I was not politically correct. Okay, uh, so not politically correct. So it's not that wide uh, spread, but it, it's being circulated among my friends. Basically, I I identified the a system of five major threats working together instead of one by one. So the first one is the communist forces from Karl Marx to today in many variants. Uh, I put it on the first because I myself escaped from China three times, uh, escaped from those communist forces. So I, I, I am extremely uh, clear and sensitive uh, to perceive that kind of uh, threats. And the second one is we observed very frequently in recent years is this Islamic ideology driven terrorism. Carl is the person who helped me to clarify this perception <laughs> uh, in these years. Uh, but, uh, the, but this too seems something enemy from the Outside, it's like the the, the dragon from Stuart's story, uh, the paper dragon, and from the paper also from outside. But we have three threats from the inside. That is more dangerous. So the first one is the thing called political correct. I think this we have too much emphasize. This concept has been dominate and the tyrannical uh, to our freedom of thinking and freedom of speech for quite some time. And it's been a huge damage to our society. And and they and I think there are two incentives, two causes. Number one is of course ignorance. Uh, and number two might be the people maintaining these positions not go ignore it, but uh, they are conspiring some kind of a hidden agenda. Uh, people are trying to dissemble America, destroy America. So, so this is the major threat inside ourselves. And, and the followed by the next one is a very heavy burden of economic free riders in the name of the welfare system. I think our welfare system is kind too far that is causing a lot of more trouble than doing good for people. Uh, I had some personal experience and uh, lessons learned from encounters of this phenomenon. Uh, uh, the last one in, 19, uh, in 2015, the last one is what uh, uh, Heiner Ardent pointed out the banality of the evil that is among all of us. That we don't care. We don't care all these bad things are going on. So we let it, let them 
let the dragon eat us. Now, now this was 19, uh, it's 2015. Now today, uh, what I noticed is all of these are still going on, plus we have more here. So all of the left list plus number one, a biological re unrestricted warfare currently going on. This, this virus and the next uh, thing uh, is already created a huge gap. And the next one, we have now a deeply divided America with a deep hope to recover from it. I wish Glenda's method could help to bring this, <laughs> but we need to talk about that. Later. But uh, currently, I see very little hope. The next one is the problematic government bleeding right now. Okay. And the cybernetic Lord of Rings, uh, artificial intelligence creating a huge threat. Or at, le at, last, uh, at least a lot of people are, are very paranoid and nervous about that. And a biological Lord of Rings, you probably not familiar with this term, uh, CRISPR case map. It is a new technology that actively edited human genes. So to create the strange aliens to come. And you can add more. So the war is coming. <laughs> I told you as the wolf boy, wolf calling boy, there are five, five wolves here. Now we have more. So, so that is my purpose, to call your attention with, hopefully, if our session can generate uh, uh, some consensus that we can write a club report uh, to the community of the think tanks. Uh, to present our voices. So my last slide will be, we need to really to call for a large scale discussion. What kind of uh, America do we really want? Since the, we are already in deep trouble now. So it is time, where are we heading? Shall we discuss to a new amendment of our constitution? Shall we split to two countries of two different value systems and and each doing their their own thing and see what happened in the end. Who have been trying to destroy the American value system built by our funding partners? And uh, I think the defense of boundary uh, is already promoted by Trump and. Uh, we also notice the people are talking about the go offense in cyberspace. Uh, this is a recent uh, op-ed published in New York Post. So these are all on the table that we need to discuss. And finally, I think we need a new, coming back to the five wars, five failures. I think we need to build up a new, institution or organization or even government agency named the DOE, Department of Everything Else. Because, because the Department of Defense went there, boom, did the thing. And what next? And we see all the mess after that. So if we are well prepared, uh, especially our cyberneticians, uh, people love to discuss about the uh, the concept of developing country development, design of government, blah, blah, blah. And even a grassroots uh, participatory processes. We have plenty of friends working on those fronts. So perhaps we can unite together uh, to build up something I call department of everything else. So next time, I mean, in case there is another foreign intervention needed, and this department can go and uh, 
it a function. So that's my that's my call. Uh, R. Yes, I would like to uh, compliment you for stressing the difference in values as the source of the conflict of civilizations, uh, the clash of civilizations. In fact, you're right, it's a clash of values. And that explains everything that's going on internationally as well as the split in America. Also, it's a conflict of values. And I think we should always concentrate on that because that's the source of the problem. Uh, I think that this is not so much a matter of, of systems or general systems or patterns. It's a question of values. And, and it's a question of how do we overcome these values? How is it possible to win over the other side or to compromise with the other side if there's a question of values? And I think related to that is uh, your, uh, uh, your definition of mainstream versus peripheral. It seems to me that is culturally uh, not, I, very, no, not very productive it. because uh, the people, uh, for example, uh, in the other civilizations, uh, we, the Chinese civilization, the Islamic civilization, I don't think they consider themselves peripheral. Uh, they consider themselves maybe mainstream uh, for themselves. And so I think we have to recognize that we are not mainstream. You know, this goes back all the way to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights passed by the United Nations in 1948. They called it the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It turns out it's not universal at all. It's what you call mainstream, but it's really Western, essentially, which has now spread to certain Asian countries as well. But it's not universal uh, by any means. Uh, the, the communist regimes, the Chinese regime, the Islamic civilization, the Islamic world, they reject this notion of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we have to overcome thinking that we are universal. We would like our values to be universal, but unfortunately they're not. And that's what leads to the conflict. And whether these conflicts can be resolved uh, through war or not, uh, that is the question. Or can we simply live with uh, the fact that so much of the world does not accept our values, but we need to keep the threat to us under control. So that's my contribution. Jeremy, you raise the hand. Oh, oh, Jeremy first, and Lowe second. Uh, I just wanted to follow up to what um, Carl said, this uh, values. I would add this is my new um, favorite topic, I guess. Uh, this people who make distinctions as dividing lines, they're like the fanatics, uh, good and evil. So within each value system, you have people who are like really thinking, uh, I need to uh, fight to the death versus people who, who, who think about solving problems and who, who don't have this obsession uh, that it is a force of good and evil. And, and if evil, if good doesn't win, then it's evil. So therefore every one of the other side needs to be died. I think that is one of the major problems today that we don't have enough a discussion about these two different ways of making distinctions. And, and, and that, that is um, what Jason is talking about that the United States is a big mess because we have our own fanatics here. We don't need to go to the Middle East to see uh, fanaticism. And hopefully we'll move forward one way or another. Yeah, we'll do another session back in Norway. You前面几个,尤其是老胡讲的很有意思啊。我觉得这些话题都可以展开。I think Jason's uh, discussions are very interesting. We could uh, even expand it a little further in the future. Well, I, give you some I want mm -hmm. to uh, provide a little extra thoughts on that. America now the most popular theory is the Huntington Conflict Theory, and the Fushan Conflict Theory. It seems the most uh, popular theory in America now is the one is by Samuel Huntington's uh, uh, the, the, um, the 
the right, conflict right, of, uh, of the civilization, and the other was uh, by uh, Fukuyama. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Fukuyama uh, has, has uh, acknowledged that he was wrong. Uh, Fu Shan has already read wrong, Lord. 哎，我认为福山的那个东西，我一看题目就觉得非常荒唐，不值得议论。I I think the end of history is so so uh ridiculous. Uh, it's not even worth to be discussed. 而你们美国人还非常吹捧他，这就证明你美美国人太骄傲了。Ha, however, it was worshipped by the Americans. No, so, no, no. So, I <laughs> nobody worshipped him. <laughs> he has already acknowledged that he was wrong. I mean, the Huntington's that 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 Pre-requisition is wrong, in my opinion. Uh, because you look at his three great writings, their basic content, basic principles, basic beliefs are all the same. Because if you pay attention on these three major civilizations, their basic value, basic moral, and the basic even rules are really quite similar. 刚才那位老先生说到这个人权问题，其实中国人关注人权，中国文化关注人权比西方要早得多，在法律上关注人权。呃、uh, ，Carl, Mr. Goldenberg mentioned the human rights and the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, but in fact, the Chinese people have paid the Attention on human rights, even in ancient times, long ago. People's impression of Chinese culture, American impression of Chinese culture, is just the Chinese Communist Party culture. Unfortunately, Americans are wrongly many Americans they wrongly perceive the Chinese culture as the current communist culture in China. This is not Chinese culture. This is from the East culture. That is not a traditional Chinese culture. The communist culture is really from the West, from Karl Marx. Is it can also be a branch of Christian culture. You could even claim Marxism as a a a a weird branch of the Christianity went to into the wrong way. 说到伊斯兰这个现在这恐怖主义，它也不是伊斯兰教本身。Even talk about the Islamic extremist terrorists, it is not the really Islamism itself. 他们都管自己叫原教旨主义。什么是原教旨主义呢？就是打着前人的旗号来说自己的理论。They all claim they were the truly original Islamic. But uh, what is that? It's just the with the flag of Islam to do whatever they want themselves. It represents the very ignorant, 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 uh, represent the widespread uh, Islam in general. Unfortunately, the uh, Christians in America uh, who advocate uh, uh, multiculturalism and uh, uh, tolerance thought that was one kind of civilization without realizing it's really representative of the backwards uh, barbarian culture. 这个所谓的三大文明是在过去相对隔离的环境下独自发展的文明，但是他们能够成为大的文明，就说明他们符合人类的基本要求。The so-called three major civilizations were relatively developed 
independently by itself uh, over the a long period of time. The very fact that they become a major civilizations themselves is because they do have some basic essential value of itself. And you see, they sort of shared um, in common in between them as well. The three Civilization I counted as the Christian uh, civilization, Islamic uh, uh, civilization, and the so-called Oriental uh, civilization represented the lead by Chinese culture as well. 现在呢,发展,人类已经发展到越来越像一个地球村了。那么在这个环境下,三大文明逐渐在河流,也就是变成一个真正的冲突是什么冲突呢?就是说,先进的, 呃，符合我们所谓的普世价值观的这种文明和那些野蛮的落后的原教旨主义的文明的一种冲突。But uh, now the global has to be uh, connected into into like a village. So you, what we really see, really in my view, is the so all the three major civilizations are going together against the in conflict. With those uh, um, the, the the a barbarian fundamentalist uh, or terrorist uh, and those kind of uh, conflict. Zhongjie起来说，那那老魏，你你怎么解释国会里面那几个那几个穆斯林？国会里什么？那几个国会里面那几个穆斯林代代表？那那个我想他们就是已经接受了那个呃所谓原教旨主义的，当然他们不会承
where the individual is subordinated to the state. And that's a very different conception of, of uh, how human beings uh, are created and their, their nature. Uh, and uh, it seems to me if we look at it in that way, we will understand better why there is such a conflict between uh, the American constitution, for example, and our civilization and the rest of the world. It's individualism versus collectivism. Mm, uh, 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 I think you are very correct uh, the, the difference between collectionism and uh, the individualism really has been existing with human even back to the monkey time. 这是一个人类的永恒的话题，就是你怎么在这两者之间找到平衡。how do you achieve a balance, a median, a good median point in between two? This will be forever a topic for us, the human race. 政府呢，肯定是一个集体主义的产物，它要关关照的是整个团体的利益。Government, of course, is a product of the collectionism. 但是一个好的政治体制的标准就是什么呢？它在照顾全体利益的同时。but uh, what is the good uh, uh, collectionism is is that when they were uh, doing that, they will take care of the maximize the individualism as well. 人类在这方面做的最好, I, I think a human has been doing the best among all the animals, and that's why a human becomes the outpaced race than the other animals. But人类中有一些部分,比如现在的中国共产党,他们就用集体主义来压制每一个个人,就像古代的奴隶制一样,把所有的公民都变成了奴隶,这个是需要推翻的。but uh, however, there were terrible system like a communist regime in China. <coughs> they use uh, in the name of a collectionism, they suppress all sorts of individualism. In the way as the serf system in ancient time, they try to turn the others into slaves. Those kind of system, we must overthrow it. Uh, and I view American's problem now is it has a hard time to resist those kind of evil nature, the collectivism, uh, which is overcomes everything else. And that's become very dangerous. So, so I think your scholars a uh, very important topic for your scholars to study and uh, is to uh, to figure out how could you have a, a su successful way to overcome those evil natured collectivism extremists. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I see the American politicians are considering uh, a very dangerous approach as to how to reach equilibrium with those devil evil regimes. <laughs> so all that me simplify this uh, issue. Americans has lost the will to resist. Jamie. If I if I may respond, uh, this, the the question individualism versus collectivism is like it's stating the wrong problem. There is a guy, he's called Karl Popper, and he has been talking is the interactions, is the interactions between people and and so yes. We have problems because either it is they look at the individual mind or at the entire system. But if you look at the interactions, then you see it's negotiation. And the ones that are good negotiators, they get to the top. And the ones that are bad negotiators, they remain at the bottom. And so the perceptive negotiators 
who are they? Where do they get their knowledge? How do they become good at what they are? That is what we need. We need a paradigm that looks at us as negotiators. And I think that there is some knowledge, but it's all scattered. And it needs to be brought up to the surface. Lucio, we want to hear from you. <laughs> Lucio. Okay, he's, he's, he's left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's there. Can we hear from you, Lucio? Yeah, he's I'm uh, here. There. Today. Okay, but there are so many, so many things, so many things to say. It's, it's hard to <laughs> revise all of them. Uh, so maybe one, one question that I would like to underline is that uh, something that is uh, uh, now referred to the American system, um, at least to, to US and its dynamics, is something that is common uh, to any situation in which a, a country uh, got so high power and uh, uh, I mean, a systematic uh, underestimation of other cultures, other uh, other dynamics and uh, uh, other values is something that is typical of who is acquired uh, so big power that it just uh, is, it became self-referential. It became starting to believe that its system is the best one just because uh, uh, succeeded just because uh, it is the most powerful. So it's not something that is uh, only a peculiar uh, of US. It, it has been peculiar also in, in Soviet Union and uh, probably would be uh, in the future or, or also of China. Uh, the, the point is just in the uh, dynamics and the possibility to balance and count counterbalance uh, uh, different forces into the same system. And so being that system more flexible and more open to understand other systems. So uh, somehow I share a lot of criticism to, to US, uh, but the point is that it's not a peculiarity of US. Is, and it's not even a peculiarity of capitalism. It's a peculiarity of countries with uh, temporarily in that time, the highest power respect to all the other countries, or at least uh, as, as was uh, in, in US and, and USSR uh, situation. So uh, I, somehow I would like to reverse the point. So despite US uh, has been the uh, most powerful, at least in the last 100 years, uh, country. And despite this would uh, produce such uh, overestimation of its own uh, uh, culture and values and underestimation of other countries, cultures and values, despite this, US has, I mean, let, let's call it democratic uh, uh, dynamics that can keep it not so close and not so self-referential as other systems did in history. Hmm. No more questions? Stuart, are you there? He, he said that he will be in a different meeting. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Final <laughs> concluding remarks. <laughs> well, I'll second Lucio's remark. Excuse me. No, I, the United States has lots of problems, but it's very diverse. It, uh, it has many learning uh, institutions and inclinations and a strong desire to learn and understand from other societies. And I think that's that will save us in the long term, I hope. I thought Lucio said it very well. Okay. Looks like we are getting closer to the park. 
just like to introduce one <clears throat> controversial thought that uh, the problem, oh, an essence of the problem is not that we fail to recognize the values of other cultures, but the failure to recognize the value of our own culture and defend it against those who would uh, destroy it. And this is where our civilization is in conflict with other civilizations, just like the other civilizations are in conflict with our civilization. If they are more willing to defend their values than we are to defend our values, we're going to lose. Uh, no, those talks are very interesting. <coughs> very good to uh, motivate <coughs> us to think further after this. Thank you. Okay, so we will do more of this topic later, maybe next month. And I thank you very much for attending. Mm, uh, it's been a very thought-provoking day. <laughs>